Hi everybody, now you've probably noticed that on the channel recently I've been doing a lot more Armour 3 content and in particular I've been doing a lot of Prairie Fire DLC content as well. So in this video I want to try and explain why the Prairie Fire DLC for Armour 3 is so, so special and how you should definitely be checking it out if you're a fan of Armour and how maybe if you haven't thought about playing Armour 3 before maybe maybe this is the time maybe this is the time because i don't know this is really really good now it could be that i'm biased towards this dlc because the armor 3 prairie fire c dlc is is about vietnam it's about the vietnam war about the americans involvement in vietnam and a particular part of it which is the um the operations of Mac V Sog. So these are the special forces soldiers that went um, over the fence, so to speak, into the neighbouring countries of Laos and Cambodia in order to do reconnaissance and strike missions against the North Vietnamese who were using those two countries um, to transport uh, weapons and men and fuel and munitions down to the south to fight in the, the war in South Vietnam. Um, and these were kind of top secret missions um, they weren't recognized at the time and in fact qu until quite a lot of time after um, they weren't really talked about because they were they were so secret and I despite being British I've always had a strong fascination with the Vietnam War um, in particular the American involvement um, in Vietnam from sort of 65 to I guess really the fall of Saigon in 75. Um, I'm trying to think how it started. It may have been, I've got a funny feeling it may have been watching Apocalypse Now when I was quite young, probably when I was, I don't know, 12 or 13. I think it was like on BBC Two or something. And I think I might have turned it on halfway through to the bit where they, they're on the, sh on the little plastic boat, the PBR, going down the river and then they get attacked by uh, the indigenous people firing arrows at them and I remember thinking at the time I didn't realize I was watching a film I thought I was watching like a documentary and then of course then I tw twigged you know as it went on that no this wasn't an actual documentary this was this was a proper film um, and obviously you know Apocalypse Now is, is very visual you know you've got all those amazing amazing scenes in it um, and then I also remember reading a book by a guy called Mark Baker, which I think was called just called Nam, and it was a collection of interviews with um, soldiers and um, nurses and people who'd who'd fought in Vietnam, and it was their stories. But in particular, there was no glory in the Nam book. It was about the dirt and dirty and nasty side of Vietnam as well. And that really sort of um, made me get, want to learn, learn more. And then I remember I collected, there was a magazine that came out. I think that was called Nam as well. And it came out like every month, I think, for two years. And it, it became this history of the American involvement in Vietnam, again, from 65, I think, through to 75. And I would also, I also read quite a few books about it. I can't remember all of them. I remember, I remember reading The Fall of Saigon, which was about, you know, the American military had left by 1975 they left sort of in 72 uh, the ground forces anyway um, and the fall of Saigon was about you know what happened right up to the last helicopter leaving the American embassy um, and flying out you know and those iconic images of the helicopters flying out of Vietnam and on the American aircraft carriers them pushing the helicopters into the sea because they didn't have enough room and then and then I, I lived in Hong Kong in the early 80s because my dad was in the Navy and we had lots of Vietnamese boat people come to 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 Hong Kong as well, because obviously lots of people were trying to escape, and 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 that might have been in the back of my mind as well. And there was always this fascination, the fact that you had, you know, the, the greatest superpower in the world, you know, the United States of America, who at the same time um, of as they were fighting in Vietnam was putting a man on the moon in 1969, and was doing all these amazing things, and yet they didn't win the war in vietnam they were forced to withdraw so it's kind of you, you have this this real tragedy of obviously uh, on both sides and, and including like the civilians and all the countries around it you know then you watch the killing fields you know um, with what happened in cambodia with khmer rouge and years year zero and all that sort of stuff 
you know the fact that like more bombs were dropped on North Vietnam than were dropped on Germany during the Second World War um, and all this effort was put in all these resources were put in and yet the North Vietnamese still won in inverted commas um, um, absolutely fantastic and then you had you know things like Rambo um, and I remember reading the first blood book actually um, which is kind of a bit similar to film but that gives you a bit of an idea you know of, of the idea of all these soldiers who came back from Vietnam as well who weren't greeted um, as heroes or anything like that but, but were, were, were treated in um, in terrible ways a lot of the time so so I've got this fascination with, with Vietnam and what happened and the tragedy of the Vietnam War, you know, as all wars are tragedy. But the Vietnam conflict, you know, from... I mean, I mean, the other side of it is the, is the British connection with Vietnam. The fact that at the end of the Second World War, one of the... Well, and during this, the Second World War, one of the things that was said to people like Ho Chi Minh, who was fighting the Japanese in Vietnam, was the idea that after the Second World War, you'll get your independence. Um, and in fact, when the British... It was the British who were in charge in Vietnam, I'm pretty sure, that they were given Vietnam to look at, kind of look after it. And then we kind of handed it back to the French. You know, and the French went through, you know, the, the, the war against the... Um, Viet Minh, I think they were cold, and then you had Dien Bien Phu, and the French, you know, withdrew, and you, you had all that sort of stuff. Um... And that you, and you can also sort of compare that with the British um, experiences in Malaya. So, so there's a lot, lots of stuff going on. So so very very interesting in Vietnam. And I've always enjoyed things like, um, uh, say, in Call of Duty Black Ops, um, the Vietnam um, missions in that. You know, like the K San mission. So anyway, when Sog uh, when um, Profile came out, uh, it must be. Is it a couple of years ago? No, it's at least at least a year ago. Anyway, you know, I had Armor Three, but I'm not a big Armor Three player because I tend to play solo a lot, a lot of the time, and I don't have the time to play multiplayer. Um, and so I would kind of just dabbled in it and enjoyed the concept of Armor, but you know, didn't really you know dive into it in the way that I dive into DayZ. But recently, there's a mod called Sog AI, and the idea of Sog AI is that it improves your ability to control your teammates. Um, in Armour 3 and in particular within Prairie Fire and so I decided to dive back into it and it has really transformed the game um, making it very 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 playable as a single player so actually in Prairie Fire what do you get well I mean we're calling it a DLC but it could really be a remaking of Armour 3 really like a reskinning of the entire game um, it's, it's a C DLC so it is officially supported by Bohemia though that they didn't do it I mean they probably helped the devs that, that did it Savage Game um, did it um, and so you know you, you pay for it and that's why it has a premium price but it includes I think there's three maps in it there's the main ca big map and then there's two smaller maps there's loads of loads of different factions there's loads of weapons loads of vehicles jets it, it, it's, it's unbelievable what's packed into it you've got co-op scenarios you've got mic force you've got this amazing it's basically a huge vietnam sandbox that armor modders can then build on but what is incredibly special about prairie fire is the sheer attention to detail that has gone into this game um the, the devs worked very closely with actual veterans who were there you know even going as, as far as getting actual equipment off the veterans so that they could scan them and create models for them that you would use in the game everything to do you know with the call outs um and how they would have talked how they would have acted all of this sort of stuff so much so in fact i'll put a link to this in the description below the video there's a podcast called sogcast um which uh, is interviews with actual um, special forces soldiers who served in Vietnam, and the stories that they tell and the the the, the, the instances that they get themselves into when you're playing Prairie Fire, you, you'll find yourself in similar situations as well, um, which which is absolutely amazing. And I also think that the format of the missions that the uh, mac v sog um squads went on really suits armor funnily enough and really suits the single player or the, the co-op situation very well so you know a small group of real players you know sort of between 
you know, four and ten real players, or you know, one person with an AI-controlled squad against b- b- bigger enemy factions. Because the star, you know, in my my eyes, is is the single player or, co- or co-op um, uh, scenarios. And basically, what they involve is some really strong story beats, and they're done very very well. And it tends to involve getting your squad together at your base in Vietnam doing a little bit of prep, getting the right gear you want, taking your helicopter flight and inserting somewhere in the jungle. Nothing really happening for quite a long time. And these missions are very long, especially if you're coming from outside of armor and you're not used to these long missions. Um, Going through the jungle, um, trying to evade uh, searchers, doing some sort of task. So it might be inserting some booby-trapped ammunition or rescuing a POW, that sort of stuff. Having to then get away which generally goes wrong and you start getting chased by an enormous number of enemies um, and then having to defend a landing zone while the, you're waiting for the helicopters come in at this point you know you're calling in air support and napalm's coming in and helicopters are coming in and going on strafing runs jumping on the helicopter you know having this flight back over the jungle getting back to the base in vietnam going to the club <laughs> You know, and the missions finish, and these really strong story beats carry you through, and uh, you find yourself playing out these scenarios that I've said from like if you if you listen to some of the interviews or read some of the books um, that that you've heard about, but also you'll find yourself in situations from things like Platoon or Apocalypse Now. Um, and you'll be like, oh gosh, this is absolutely amazing. And especially, I say, you know, when you when you're defending the LZs, um, when you're waiting for the helicopter to come, it is is really really special indeed. So I don't know. Hopefully, I've kind of convinced you that Prairie Fire is is definitely worth checking out. Um, definitely check out the single player. Um, well, uh, campaigns using the SOG AI mod and again I'll put links to this in the description below the video and hopefully it's just it's not really my completely my bias about being interested in the Vietnam War that makes me think that this is so special I think it really is very very special I think this could well be like a a once in a generation video game experience um, well, I mean I would compare it to the experience you got in Battlefield 1 when you played the single player campaign and I think it was the first mission called Mud and Blood um, where you go back and, and it starts off and you're, you're playing as one of the Harlem heroes and then you get killed and then you're playing as something else and then you get killed, then you're in a tank and it gets... I'd, I'd compare it with that sort of thing where the people behind... Uh, I believe the people behind Battlefield 1 and the people behind uh, Prairie Fire really care about the subject that they're making their video game. I mean, really, really care about it. Um, and have created something something I think that is incredibly special and we'll test, we'll, 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 we'll see the test of time and, uh, and I hope lots of other people try it out too. Anyway, that's enough for me. What do you think? Are there any other games that you think that come up to this sort of stand? If they are, put them in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I will, of course, see you again soon.